Hey guys, welcome to another episode of New Brewery Review, brought to you by the Hoppy Craftsman. Uh, this series is basically people from the craft beer community trying a new beer that they've never had before, and then sharing that experience with you. So sit back and relax and uh, enjoy the review. Hi, my name is Jeff Brecken, and this is my new brew review. Today I will be tasting, sampling, and reviewing the Dirty Hop Water series, I believe number 14, titled The Last Living Dinosaur. Well, take the out of there. It's Last Living Dinosaur. Um, for those of you who don't know what the Dirty Hop Water series is, I think the description on the can says it all. What the hell is Dirty Hop Water? First off, it's proof that Humulus Lupulus is God's gift to beer. It's also proof that the all powerful hop is still craft beer's king. The series combines hazy proteins of Arizona grown unmalted grains with the most badass, aromatically driven hops in the world. The result is this murky, juicy, tropical smoothie esque hop bomb. We won't make this dirty hop water rendition ever again, like ever. You're special if you were able to grab a sip of this can. Enjoy. Um, it is labeled as a cloudy India pale ale with Eureka, Kalista, and Belma hops. It weighs in at 8.2%, and I am drinking the 16-ounce can of this. Again, this is from Arizona Wilderness Brewing in Gilbert, Arizona. Um, this beer, it, it pours out a pale orange it's not like super orange juicy it's very pale kind of teeters on the line between a yellow and an orange um pours nice out of the can uh gives you a nice head um head retention is low it's got some good lacing on the side of the glass um the can art the can art is consistent with the rest of the dirty hop water series which shows kind of like a swampy scene with some barrels oozing out some uh, effervescence and some hops. Again, dirty hop water. They got that uh, kind of swampy vibe going on, uh, and I dig it. They they stay consistent with that, and uh, I really like the experimentation that they're uh, doing with the series. Uh, depending on who you ask, you'll hear there were some hits and misses with the series. I tend to disagree. I've liked them all. Obviously, I like some better than others, but I don't think I've had one of these where I was entirely put off or turned off uh, by the flavor of it. It's funny because one of my favorites, uh, one of the favorites of the Dirty Hop Water series to me is one of the least favorites of the brewers. When I told him it was one of my favorites, I kind of got uh, some some funny, dirty looks. Um, why this beer? Uh, Arizona Wilderness has, has always been one of my favorite breweries. It helps that it's pretty much in my backyard. They're, they're just a couple miles up the road from me. Uh, food there is great. Beers there are great. Um, they usually have something for everybody. They have a lot of different styles, a lot of different range, low ABV all the way up to high ABV. Uh, there's usually something that you can find there that you can get into. The, the servers are really well-versed in the beers there. So uh, if you're looking for a good place to go, that has uh, a lot of diversity, good food, great beers. Uh, I highly suggest going and checking them out. Um, the aroma, let's get into the review. The aroma of this beer, right on the nose, you get uh, a very citrusy, tropical, fruity nose right up front. There's a little bit of dankness in there. You can definitely tell you're, you're about ready to get assaulted by some hops. But again, that, that tropical note, the tropical note is is really, really prominent and uh, steps up and it kind of kind of hits you in the nose with the the citrus overtones. The appearance, like I said, it's it's like a very pale, opaque, uh, hazy IPA. Pretty typical what you see in the New England IPAs. Uh, low head retention, uh, decent carbonation cascade in there. Give a little swirl. The cascade fires right back up. Uh, get a get a nice little head on top of there. Good aromas. Uh, taste right off the bat. This this beer really opens up as it warms. When it's cold, I get a really really powerful alcohol hit. hit alcohol hit right up front, but you get a lot of that citrus, a lot of that tropical note. The thing I like about this beer the most is. The hops aren't an afterthought. They're not in the background. The hops weren't added just for aroma. You can tell that this was hopped to give some bitterness and aroma. I really like the hop additions. 
Um, I'm not overly familiar with uh, Eureka, Callista, and Belma, as far as I know. But uh, yeah, I, I get a really nice citrusy, dank hop note on this. It goes well with the tropical notes. And uh, there's that definite alcohol kick at the end. Again, the more this, the more this warms and the more it opens up, the more that alcohol kind of trails off. But uh, I hate using the term balance. We've talked about that on the show a lot of times. But this, I think all of the elements of this beer uh, really come together well with the, you know, the overall multi move, the hoppiness and uh, that, that alcohol hit. So it's, it's really, really tasty. Uh, mouthfeel body. This has got good body. I mean, it's, it's not super thick. Um, it's not like this was boiled for a terribly long time, but it's not, it doesn't have a thin mouthfeel. This is, it's got that real nice creamy kind of velvety silky mouthfeel to it that I really like it. Overall thoughts. Um, this is a, a very, very good IPA. Wilderness definitely knows what they're doing on the uh, IPA front. And this one is definitely not disappointing. So uh, I don't know what the plans are to continue this uh, Dirty Hop Water series. I don't know if this is an indefinite series that will go on until they get tired of making them. I don't know if there's a plan to do, you know, 15, 20, whatever. But I do know that this is number 14 in the series. If you do get a chance to pick up some of the Dirty Hop Waters, then I highly recommend you do so. So with that... Thanks for listening. I hope you liked the review and I hope to do a bunch more of these. So thanks for tuning in. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to another bonus episode of the new review by the Hoppy Craftsman podcast. Make sure to check out details for this episode's guest reviewer in the description below or actually on our blog at hoppycraftsman.beer. You can find us on Instagram at hoppycraftsman and Twitter as well at the same username. The raddest people in the world our patron supporters. Cena Gomez, San Diego Beer Talk Radio, Mark Ballesteros, Javier Gonzalez, and our newest one, Phil Mitchell Wall. So thanks for all them and all they do to help support the show and, and keep us doing what we're going to do. If you would like to become a supporter of the show as well, you can go to patreon.com slash hoppy craftsman. And uh, we have some good stuff there for you guys. So until next time, I'm Chris. Go drink local.